creative friends my name is Joey Balistrieri welcome to my channel I'm so glad you're here and I am just so happy and excited today because DHL last night delivered my two boxes that I get directly from the Czech Republic the company is called Craftica and the one that I'm going to unbox today is the Czech beads exclusive box and it is called winter magic and it is stunning look at the beads this month this is a check glass curated sort of a sampler of beads um, I just love the little boxes even that it comes in and I'm gonna do a separate video on their other box this one is called Bohem style this one is different it is a DIY jewelry box with a video link so that you can actually make the pieces of jewelry that everything is in here to make and I'm just showing you this one as a sneak peek in this video because this company is beyond lovely I absolutely the prices are amazing absolutely uh, love the price of the shipping they ship worldwide and this month look what they put in a little gift for me I haven't opened it yet um, I did pull the card out and read it it's all handwritten from the ladies that I work with at the Craftica company and I actually got um, emotional when I opened it because you know you don't expect that from a company um, it was just it's just lovely so sweet and also in this month's box they put in a couple more little gift items just to work with um, their website you can get the boxes the two boxes are separate subscriptions but the website is also really full of other craft items as well if you're a crafter who doesn't specialize in jewelry so they put in these lovely gifts and we're gonna dive right in to winter magic there are 26 items in this box every month and we get a little ingredient list and this month there's something special um, they put in a special little um, insert with a code that you can use in January of 2025 to get 20% off orders of $40 or more so that little code is here if you're a subscriber you have this tuck it away and when January comes you can shop with a really nice discount so we're gonna just jump right into this unboxing because I have to tell you something I want to jump right to these cathedral beads um, I this is one of my favorite beads on the planet and these are stunning they are 10 millimeter they just have so many amazing cuts this is a rather expensive bead to make and we got two of them in this box and when I opened this box immediately I knew what my project was going to be so I'm gonna do this as quickly as I can I really want to share these beads with you because they're wonderful as you can see this collection is very wintry and icy and frosty and amazing um, but I do want to do a project as soon as I'm done unboxing in this video so the first item on the list let me get a small piece of wire some little wire here the first item on the list is another one of my favorite beads this is a six millimeter metallic silver faceted fire polish check glass bead that is absolutely stunning if I didn't know that was glass I would think it was a metal spacer bead these beads are just amazing and then this is a silver druck which is a smooth round or pressed glass bead and these are six millimeter look at that it's so beautiful again it does not look like glass it looks like metal and then these are also absolutely breathtaking these are crystal clear a b they are half a b and they are one of the round faceted fire polish but this is in an eight millimeter so if you can see it's crystal clear on that side and then the aurora borealis finish is on this side but look at the quality and beauty of the facets in this bead and i just love that they have included all these different millimeters six eight 10 like the design possibilities are just a fabulous and then going down to another little metallic 
fire polished bead and this one is four millimeter in that matte metallic so again i love getting the same bead in different millimeter sizes because it gives you a lot of possibilities for design and then this is a crystal clear and it's also half a b half clear and this is a druck another one of those smooth rounds can you see the little aurora borealis finish focus camera the camera lens doesn't like the clear beads so much but these are wonderful beads and doesn't it look like ice i mean it just it looks like it came out of the freezer i love it i think i might even use those in my project i haven't decided on all the beads these for sure and then there are two uh pearl check glass pearls in this um in this mix and one of them is called a pearl wedding round druck and one of them is called a pearl a christmas pearl so i am actually not sure which is which but i think this is the christmas pearl because it um my wire isn't going through the hole hold on i'll just try to show you that get my finger out of the way oh you know what it might have too small of a hole for this wire pearls do have smaller holes it does let me see let me get a, a skinnier piece of wire so i can get my fingers out of the way there we go so i am thinking that this is the christmas pearl and that this one is the wedding pearl because this one is more matte and more satin looks like the satin of a wedding dress and this one is more luminescent and just looks a little bit more festive to me but i might have them reversed um they don't number their little bags on the list so um, i'm just not sure but i love both of them they are wonderful i love getting a check glass pearl and then we got these beautiful stars in two sizes there is a white opal flat star bead in 12 millimeter and then the exact same bead in let's see what is the millimeter of the other one uh six millimeter so that's the that's the 12 millimeter and that's the six millimeter aren't they sweet they remind me of the vintage milk glass i used to look for pieces of that milk glass when i was antiquing and that's what that looks like to me um and then let's see what's up next on the list oh the crystal teardrop oh my goodness you guys look at this bead i know it's clear i really hope the camera's showing it to you but the facets on this little teardrop bead are just amazing and also the shape and i also love these beads because my stringing material is peeking through the facets so whether you use wire or like the 49 strand soft flex um, it just like adds a little dimension you're like peeking through a window so i really do love these beads and they look so icy and sparkly and then you know i'm just like i have to pick this up again look at the facets on this cathedral bead and look at the detail on the end i mean this is just one of my favorite beads i'd like to have a strand about a thousand beads long of these i'm totally totally in love with that bead um, like i said i opened this box and jumped right to that <laughs> these are crystal alaska blue purple large flat cup flower beads it's a 14 millimeter so it's a little concave in the middle so i think that's why they're calling it a cup bead but this is also one of my favorite check glass flower beads and let me just like take any bead here and just show you because when you're stringing you actually can rest something in the middle and just give a lot of dimension to a piece i mean you can also string them right on a strand but a ball head pin and adding in another bead or a couple of seed beads you can get so many cool effects with this check glass flower and they even look great if you string them back to back you know you get a whole nother look i mean you can just do so much with them and the detail in a check glass bead it always impresses me i just love the way the wash kind of shows all of the pressed little veining it really does look like a flower like if you picked it up off the ground and the colors are just so beautiful in this particular one i'm pretty sure i don't have that color and then there's a crystal gray a b faceted rondelle beads these are four millimeter but look how gorgeous they are i think i might even use these in my first project i'm not sure if i want to go with the gray or not but we also got these crystal a b um 
just clear crystal, not gray, the same bead, four millimeter. And I do love those. I mean, they just add so much bling. Wait until you see what I wanna do. I'm super excited. And then we got that same bead again in the crystal blue. And again, doesn't this look polar and Arctic, like the blue ice and you know, it just, it, they're beautiful. And then we got another little druck bead here. This is a metallic matte silver. It's just a small spacer bead, but it's three millimeters. So pretty much wherever it's small, we got my small piece of wire. So pretty much wherever you would use seed beads, this is like a seed bead on steroids <laughs> because you just have this beautiful, smooth matte. It looks, it does look metallic. Um, just a wonderful little bead. I love small beads. They're so wonderful. That's another thing you can just never have too many of. And then this is absolutely amazing. This is a matte blue leopard skin round. Um, this is this pattern is a laser. It, it's done with a laser on here. It's a coin bead, 14 millimeter. But this bead is special because it is a two hole bead. I don't know. Um, I must have a little burr on the end of this wire. I don't know if the camera is, if, if it's too dark for you to see that there are two holes. And we had these beads in a different colorway in another one of their boxes a few months back. And I did the most fun pair of earrings with these beads. <laughs> I can link that video below if you didn't see it, but um, there's two of them and they are just really, really fun to design with. Um, they just have so much interest and dimension. I love them. And then up next is this matte blue sapphire seashell. It's a flat round bead. And I have to say, I have seen this. It's like, it looks like a fossil, but this one is quite different. Just look at the dimension. It almost looks a little bit free form and it's very dimensional. And look at this side. That is absolutely a gorgeous bead. I mean, I could have pictured that like frozen in the ice. So pretty, I love that bead. That would make a fabulous focal on a necklace. And then these are gorgeous. You can never have enough of these are great for spacers. This is a little silver cube seed bead in four millimeter. And again, it looks like metal. It's metallic and it's just got those, it's cube, but it's a soft cube, like the edges are all soft. Um, just absolutely a fabulous spacer bead. When you add um, this kind of a spacer bead, like a different shape to any of your stringing, you just add so much interest and dimension. A little bit unexpected because it's a cube. And then, you know, this is the, the classic check glass owl. Um, he comes in so many colors, but look at the colorway on this one. And this bead in particular fascin fascinates me because these are um, only a seven, well, they're 15 millimeter this way, but seven millimeter by 15 millimeter. And it's a, it's a pretty small bead, but look at the detail. You can literally see the owl's eyes, his ears, his nose. You can see his wings, his little feet right there, his tail feathers. I mean, I don't know how they do so much detail in such a small bead. It's really impressive. I just love it. And I have to say, like I did a video recently where I just took some gingerbread guys and made a beaded chain out of them. And when I saw this little pile of owls and we got another color, I was thinking what a gorgeous little bracelet that would make just to make a component out of each of the owls and just put them together as an owl beaded chain. It would be so sweet and whimsical and just really fun. I love that little guy. Um, and then we got this small, um, I'm sorry, I'm reading the owl again, the aquamarine blue crystal faceted spacer bead. They're calling this a spacer bead, but it is beautiful. It's a six millimeter bead. Of course, you can use it as a spacer bead. Uh, the six millimeter is such a sweet size because if you want larger jewelry, using the six millimeter as your spacer for even larger beads is great but this is my size, my scale of jewelry that I love to work with. And then we got these um, metallic matte silver small dagger beads. So they match everything else in the box. 
And one of my things that I love to do with dagger beads, the, these are too small for my wire, but one of the things I love to do with dagger beads is just put a little jump ring like made out of 22, this is 20, so 22 gauge wire would go through there and cluster them together. You get such a beautiful look with that. And it's so cool that they match every, the other, they match the drucks and the faceted rounds and the cubes. So just really beautiful. And then here's our little owl again in the silver. He is amazing in the silver, and it looks like a metal bead again, but it is glass. It's so pretty. I don't want to put him down. This bead is amazing. This is a crystal silver dichroic vitriol, half back lit petroleum two hole bead. It's eight millimeter by six millimeter. I really don't know. I'm looking in my camera lens. This bead is amazing. The back side of it is silver, looks metallic, and you can see through it and see the colors almost looks AB as you look through it. Is it showing you? Um, and it's a two hole bead and there's four of them. So this would make a stunning bracelet. I was playing with them a little bit. There's four of them so you could line them up and use almost any of these, even these little round drucks, and do a beautiful little stringing project. Um, they are just amazing. Let me zoom in with them on the mat. Is that helping you? I mean, I have never seen this bead. I think it's quite amazing. And I'm gonna go right to the next one because it coordinates beautifully with that bead, but this one has a drill hole. I do need my, sh my skinnier piece of wire. This one has the drill hole through the top and it has that silver back as well. So this one is a that same dichroic vitriol, but it's a half teardrop and this is 11 by nine millimeter. So this would even make a beautiful dangle, but you can also uh, string these. You can do a spacer bead in between and string these. They are just so much fun. Um, and then the last item, I hate to get to the last item, it's so sad, a white metallic dark silver, um, it's two-sided, so it's um, like white on one side, kind of opaque, and the dark silver on the other side, this little 5 by 16 um, they're calling it a flat leaf, but I see it as a dagger bead. That, it's a beautiful little bead. Again, you can do the same thing. Put your jump rings through and make little clusters with them. Just so much fun. So this is the 26 items in the box, but I'm gonna share my gift with all of you. I waited to open it. I mean, I just love it that the team hand wrote these labels and what a sweet little, little gift. I did peek in at the little card, but they all signed it. All the ladies at Craftica and the team there, they wrote, hand wrote their cards and signed it. That just really means a lot to me, even more than the gift. You know, that when you're working with someone that, you know, that they value you a little bit. I mean, it just, I just thought it was really sweet. It's not so much the gift. It's always lovely to get beads, <laughs> but I'm, so I'm just gonna take these out really quickly and kind of show you Oh, a little strand of multicolored pinch beads. Oh, look at those pink ones. Oh, wow. Those are beautiful. And then, oh, one of my loves in life, two whole tile beads. Oh, I love playing with two whole tile beads. And there's some pink ones on there, too. I have so much fun. I have an entire playlist for different projects with two whole beads that are not necessarily bead weaving. So if you're not a bead weaver or a seed beater with needle and thread, but you'd still like to play with two whole beads, I have an entire playlist on my main channel page for this kind of thing. And then, oh my goodness, look at this. Look at all the different dagger beads. Oh wow, they are so gorgeous. Every color, some laser etched ones. What a gift. Oh my, look at the gold ones, the matte metallic ones on the end. Ah, oh, what a gift. That is so amazing. <laughs> and then I love these little check glass table cut little little um, beads. Oh wow, I can't even talk. They have the Picasso wash around the end and then they're around the edge and then they're table cut on both sides. Look how sweet. What a gift. And then one more wonderful strand of table cut check glass beads, all the different colors to work with. 
oh, I'm excited about this. I've been watching the jewelry trends for 2025 and pearls are coming on the scene really big. They never really go out of style. They're such a classic wardrobe staple, but like the, um, the, um, Baroque pearls and pearls that are fresh water and unusual shapes. And I love these kind of organic shaped check glass beads to mix with those. When I look at that, that's what I think of. I already have projects in mind. So thank you, thank you, thank you to Anna, Natalia, everybody at Craftica. Since I met your company, I have been beyond thrilled every month when your excellent excellent bead boxes come to me sparking creativity and fun and i just um thank you so much and thank you for acknowledging me too you guys are wonderful and so i'm going to just clean up my mat real quick and i want to make a project what i'm going to do is take a little dish here and let's see i'm going to put in this dish the things that i think may go into my project so i'm gonna it'll just be a second for you but i'm gonna like gather up the things that may get used and i will be right back with my project okay i have organized myself and i'm gonna be working with this textured oval stainless steel chain that i just had in my stash and this is literally a piece that was left over so i don't even know the length but if you like this project the links are really up to you you can make this much longer and more dramatic or much shorter um, if you've been around my channel you know that i tend to like things really long so what i'm doing here is i'm not finding the middle i do want to find a link that I can attach my bead stringing wire to and I want this end to be offset a little bit just like that so right here I'm going to put my soft flex beading wire this is the white quartz put it through so I don't lose my link and I'll show you what I'm working with so I'm just putting my soft flex right through that link and so this is what it looks like. It's the white quartz and it's just so pretty and frosty with the silvers and the crystals. I'm also going to bring in just from my stash some seed beads um, just in a white. They're like a clear outside and opaque white on the inside. I just might need those because this necklace is going to be a little bit unusual. It's kind of a lariat but with a twist. I'm also gonna be using my Sawflex number two crimp tubes. And let's see, I think I will only need two of them. These are so high quality. Um, they have a nice thick wall. Did I just lost it? Oh, there it goes. Um, they have a nice thick wall and they work really great with any crimping method. You can flat crimp these. You can use your Zuron like fold over taco style. Um, but I'm going to use my magical crimping plier. They work. Oh, there's the other one. <laughs> I have an extra one out here. Sorry, I got distracted by my little crimp beads. And then I'm using for all of my little wired components, I'm using my soft flex wire. It's 20 gauge. Uh, you could use 22 gauge with this, but I always use the the thickest gauge that will fit through my beads. So I did a little test on all the beads that I wanted in my project and um, this is what I have. So far I'm gonna make a few more uh, really simple little components and the thing about the components is that I wanted them to be in the scale of the chain. So I didn't want like huge bead stations. Um, I tried, I looked at this one. I love this bead so much. Um, but I felt like it might be a little bit big. I may do a couple of components for down near the bottom. That's what I'm thinking because I do want to use that bead. So I have it out here. Um, what else do I have out here? I have these little decorative head pin pins in my stash and I can link those below. And I've already made one of my little drops. That's what it's going to look like. And the idea behind this is that I did not want to do anything to take away from this amazing cathedral bead. So I left it pretty plain and just topped it off with a crystal. And I want my final drop on my necklace to have a little dangle. So we'll do the other one of those together. But the first thing that I'm going to do to start this piece is get my spot on my chain and I am going to feed my crimp tube 
down over both wires. Okay, I need this loop. I want it to be really tiny. Can you see? I pulled it as tiny as I can get it. And this is one of the applications where I truly love the magical crimping plier because it is so unobtrusive. It's nice and strong, um, but it just looks like a little seed bead when you're done. And for this design, this transition from my chain to my beaded section, it's going to be really important that you know it be almost unnoticeable to, for it to look good. Okay, so look how pretty that is. And I, um, I'm gonna not cut my tail yet because I'm not sure of my pattern here. I probably will use one of those. In fact, let's go ahead and try it. Although I need to, um, I can't start stringing until I add my dangles on the other end and I'll show you why, because they need to be compatible with this, um, with the loop. So do two strands don't go through that bead. Um, so I'll come back to that. Maybe they will, maybe I'll start off with one of these. Let's see, I'll come back to it because I'll show you why we need to do the drops on the end of the necklace first. Let's see, oh yeah, that works. Oh, that's really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna start with that one, but I will trim this a little bit. And it will just hide right inside that bead. Okay, decision made. So on this end, I am going to take these components and I've decided it's going to be totally at random. I'm not counting links. I'm just gonna choose areas at random, lengthen this a little bit and add those in. So I don't really need to add my drops, but these are going, I'm gonna do another one exactly like this and it's gonna get attached to the end. So I'm not gonna really add them right now because I am gonna add in all these components and I don't want this to be too long. I don't want it to be too short either, but that's the plan. And the reason this is important, we'll go ahead and make the second one is because when I finish this strung section, which will go behind the neck, this part will be behind the neck. When I come to the length that I want and I didn't measure, I literally am putting this around my own neck to see where it falls. When I come to this end, I'm going to make a loop probably with these silver drucks and these white seed beads. And I need that loop to be just the sweet spot for two of these to go through it. Um, and that's how the necklace is going to clasp. Um, it's probably better if I just show you. <laughs> so let's do another one of these. I'm just gonna take my 20 gauge wire from Softflex and my one step looper, if I can get untangled from the microphone cord. And I've just been doing simple loops this way, but if you're good at doing them with your pliers or you don't have this tool, you know, uh, when I have a bunch of components to make, I don't put it down. I just, you know, keep it in my hand. And for me, it really works um, without stressing my hand. I have a problem with arthritis. So this tool just really keeps me from having pain here. So here is this little component. That is literally all I did because that cathedral bead just, oh my goodness. Is there anything more gorgeous than a 10 millimeter cathedral bead in any color? I am being super careful here. There it is because I don't want to, definitely don't want to do anything to damage my bead. So I stayed really far away from my crystal and I'm going to bend this down as I close and I can make like any adjustments to my loops after this tool is out of the way. Um, and I'm even going to leave that open because it's getting added onto my chain so I can fuss with that later. And then this drop, I started with this head pin and one of these gorgeous silver drucks and then I just topped it off with one of the crystal AB spacers. It's just, it's so simple, but it sparkles and it's just so elegant and wonderful. And I don't have to pay attention to the direction of these loops because my um, drops are 360 They as they turn around. And then I am just gonna open this a little bit and add it to the bottom of this. And you could really do, 
your two drops different if you wanted to, but this whole design is really just to feature these cathedral beads because I love them. So those are gonna be the drops on the end of my necklace. And so back to this side, I'm gonna create a little stringing pattern right here and just kind of play with this. Um, I don't want these beads to be too, too big. Uh, let's see, just gonna play for a second. Okay, I'm gonna get this out of the way. This is what I have left. I'm gonna take my little crimp tube out because I'll need that. And um, I don't know if I'll come back for more of these crystals, but I'm gonna get that out of the way. I am going to show you what ended up happening here. I did not have enough length with the pattern that I was going with. So I went back and unstrung, it didn't take me very long. I really enjoy stringing anyway. And I just added three seed beads in between instead of one, my powerful seed beads. As I always say, they can extend the length of gemstones or if you, know, you need to get length and you don't have a lot of your check glass, they can make that happen. So that's what I did and I did um, odd numbers. So there are three of the larger uh, fire polish beads and three little sections of the silver metallic in between and I just continued like that doing three seed beads in between everything and this part of the necklace is alternating the small metallic silver and the crystal rondelles and this part is mostly going to be behind the neck. This will be a convertible necklace but I think most of the time this part of the pattern will just be around the neck so it's really simple and smaller so it will be comfortable to wear. And when I come back around, this part will be the front where we're going to create that loop. I just shifted to those beautiful metallic cube beads with one seed bead in between. So I know I love this long dramatic length, but it's a little bit hard to show you on the mat. But so right here, um, this is going to meet up with this so it's you know I wanted it to be random and you'll see I started working on this part as well but let's get this loop in here so that I can crimp this and move on so I'm gonna put uh, another crimp tube there and I am going to create with um, let me pull these in let me get my little scoop and pull in these little silver drucks that's what I'm gonna make my loop out of it's a little bit easier to pick up small beads from the mat than it is from a dish. Um, so I'm gonna just use what I need of these. And, and as I showed you when I started out kind of laying out the plan, um, this is my drop on this side and there will be a second one. So they both need to fit through the loop size that I create here. So that's uh, what I'm going for. And I think I'm gonna continue with one of those little white seed beads. They're so pretty. The opaque white is encased in a clear. So it gives a really, just gives a really pretty look. So I'm just going to string this to my desired length. Okay, I think that's gonna be pretty good. When I loop it around, um, I definitely don't wanna lose my stringing, but when I create that loop, when I pull it through the crimp tube, this end of the necklace and my second one will go through the loop and that's going to be the clasp on this piece. So I didn't leave myself a lot of wire to work. I love my soft flex wire and I'm just always so careful not to waste it. So I'm just gonna get this through the crimp tube. I know it will not go back down through that cube bead because the hole was really small, but I'm just going to get it in there and get a hold of the end with my pliers and pull it tight, make a loop. Okay, so this is the end and I'm crimping off. So before I crimp, I'm just gonna check everything. And this part too, like I don't want any gaps in my stringing. Um, and I don't want my necklace to be rigid, so I'm just gonna do this and just check before I crimp, pull that tight, and I'm gonna do the same thing that we did right here with that number two crimp tube and my 
magical crimping plier. Let's take my time and get it centered. That is beautiful. So on a design like this, um, and I may look and see what I have, but if you wanted to put a crimp cover over the magical uh, crimped bead, you don't have to, but if you feel like your design needs a little bit more chunkiness there, you can always, um, you know, put one right on top of everything. When I'm all finished, I'll have a look and see. Um, let me clean up a little bit. Okay, now we're going to work on the chain part of the design. So I have already done this side, and as I said, totally random. I started at the end by attaching the drop that we made, and just at random, I opened these links and added in the components that I made. Didn't count, I did not count, I just you know, looked at it, eyeballed it, as we say, I make my jewelry with my heart, and I worked my way up. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side, but I do want to lay these beside each other so that I can stagger my little bead components that I'm adding in. You know, I don't, if I can help it, I don't want to have them right beside each other. So uh, we'll start at the very bottom and go ahead and add this drop. And I did do the one and a half millimeter one step looper because as I mentioned in the beginning when I was choosing beads, this is the chain that I had in my stash and I just wanted to keep everything in the right scale. So um, I have a different number of components on this side too and I'm going to make one more. Um, I just did one of the faceted beads on this side and I think I'm going to do two here. Uh, let's go ahead and get this last one made and then when I start connecting that will go pretty fast. And so this component had a cube bead and a crystal and a cube bead and um, you may have noticed this little pot here. <laughs> we are going to make a fast and fabulous pair of earrings to go with this design. I'm, I'm so excited about the way this is turning out. I don't know if you guys are like me, but when I design something and I can tell that it's going to work and that it's going to be fabulous, <laughs> um, I get excited. I'm like, I want to hurry and get finished and put it on. So um, that is, I'll show you exactly what I did. And so again, I just want to be totally random. So I'm just picking a spot and I'm going to stagger. I don't want um, to like have my, my add in components to, um, you know, parallel with the other, with the other chain. It's going to dangle, you know, it's for sure going to dangle and move around, but um, I'm going to try to stagger them as best I can. My particular chain, I don't know which which one you'll have in your, you know, which one you'll be using, but my particular chain is stainless steel and it's textured. And at first I didn't even think that I could open the links, which I prefer to do with the stainless steel chain because it's easier on my hands. Um, so when I discovered that I could open it, I love working with this kind of a chain. So pretty. And I didn't fix my, didn't tidy up any of my loops because I knew that I was going to be opening things and adding them in. So this is what I did up the whole piece. Then I can tidy my loops and work hard in them by opening and closing the pliers with a little bit of force. So I'm going to put the next one right about here. And the reason I chose uh, this, you know, all my beads that I chose for my components were the smaller beads, but I like the weight, the weightiness of a design to be at the bottom of a, of a necklace like this. So that's why I'm just using these, um, 
I'm just using these right at the bottom just to add a little weightiness right about there. And I love the random idea because it's not only easy and fun, but I just think it's really interesting, not too planned out. Okay, I will definitely put some pictures up at the end of the video and show a few different ways to style this necklace because it's too long for the mat. But let me just show you the idea. So the part where the chain starts will go through this loop and this part goes around the neck. But it's so long that you could wrap it twice around the neck if you wanted to or you can pull this up and make this a choker length. But what I love about having the chain here um, is because it's chain, so I can make a double loop and that's when it's on the neck. So what I mean by that is put my little drops through the loop a second time and that will like really secure it around the neck because sometimes a lasso or lariat style necklace when you're moving around you know it doesn't stay exactly where you've positioned it but because this chain is so fluid of course this would be much easier if it was on me but um, that's the idea is where the chain loops around the loop you know twice and so it, it's just this is so pretty it's so sparkly and so wintry and look at the drops and like what i love about this is my favorite beads the cathedral beads and the faceted check glass rounds um, all the the real favorites of mine are at the bottom of the necklace where i can see it and you know if you're a fidgeter you have this beautiful beads to look at they're just artwork so let's jump into the earrings um I, like i said i know this is doesn't look very good on my mat but it is absolutely wonderful and before we do go on to the earrings i just wanted to say that if you don't have chain in your stash but you like this project, consider doing your own beaded chain with craft wire and even seed beads or little small beads and kind of making your own chain. Um, you know, I extended the length of this and this was literally just left over from something probably a year ago and, but I don't throw anything away. So this is the little earring. And this is kind of one of my specialties. If you are not new here, you've seen me do this before, but I took the decorative head pins, the same ones that I used on the bottom drop of my necklace, so everything coordinates. And I just stacked my leftover ear, my leftover beads, um, but I did go into my stash and get this really pretty wide, um, it's kind of a large hole spacer bead. And then I just made this beautiful little stack. And I love, love, love doing head pin earrings or even craft wire earrings this way because your ear wire and everything is all in one. So I'm gonna take my bent chain nose pliers or any, any chain nose pliers and just bend this forward like a 45 degree. So, you know, on this, this is a 360 design, but whatever you want on these earrings to be facing forward, uh, put that as your front facing and bend your wire toward you. And then any barrel uh, on any plier, I love this one. I've come to realize that this, in making so many of these, that this smaller barrel just really makes these sit in my piercing really well. And again, I'm just gonna, that's my facing forward. So before we make this next bend, just make sure everything's lined up. And then this gets wrapped around that barrel 
and if I hadn't done a sample, I probably would have put them both on here and wrapped them both at the same time. But you can make adjustments if, you know, like this one got bent a little bit, you can make adjustments after. But that forward bend that we made is what keeps your beads on, and there's your ear wire. So on this particular pair, so that I don't have to measure, I um, took my flat nose pliers and I put them right at the end so it's flush there and I did that because I felt like this was too long. I'm going to switch hands because I am right hand dominant and I'm going to come right there and snip right where, uh, right on top of my flat nose pliers. And so that's the exact same measurement, you know, without measuring, I get that done. And then I'm going to use these flat nose pliers and just make a little, kick this out, just, you know, like a regular ear wire. And that earring is done. Fast and fabulous. So um, I always link this little reamer and file set. Um, I also have a battery operated one, but these are head pins. They're kind of a thick gauge. But you don't, you know, you want it to be finished so you can do it like that's nice and smooth and won't scratch or hurt a piercing or skin. Um, but I also, I've shown this before, I'm a jewelry tool aholic. Reach behind me. I keep this on my little work cart. This um, has an attachment that's the little cup end, but you can pull this out and put a reamer and it's battery operated. So that little cup attachment just fits over your wire and it just um, smooths oh that's even better than the it is a little bit better than doing it by hand um, but I love my tools so I always link all my favorite tools in the description box of my videos because it's taken me years, years of decades really, of collecting jewelry tools. And you know, I had a wish list. And um, so that way as you see things, you can decide if it's something you want and you wanna add it to your jewelry tool wish list. But this beautiful little set of earrings, like it's all done and this was so easy. I mean, there was nothing that a beginner could not do here. It is stringing simple loops and opening and closing those simple loops. And I'm just thrilled with it. So I will take my Permalac anti-tarnish coating and just brush it on these head pins. And pretty much everything else was glass and stainless steel, so that won't take me very long. Um, it looks like this. I always use the semi-gloss. It is available in matte too, but even if I accidentally brush one of my check glass beads with this, it just disappears. So I cannot wait to wear this. Uh, I'm gonna put this on my little mannequin and take some pictures, but I'll definitely put this in my next try-on video. So also in the description box of this video will be links to the Check Beads exclusive box and um, the Craftica company. I do have a code so you can use that and uh, these do come directly from the Czech Republic and they are amazing as you can see. The beads are wonderful and I still have so much left over and this was a pretty big project. So I thank you so much for watching. I hope everybody's safe and well and having fun on your beading mats. Ciao friends.